lost my voice when I got my gun. So, enjoy text speech, Alfie. What's happening in the bedroom, Rack Pack? Redrick here. Or I guess I'm technically text to speech, Alfie. But in all our hearts, I'm Redrick. What the fuck is Redrick, motherfucker? Red Rack. Anyway. Harley and I went back to Comic Con this year. Woo woo. Did you have a fucking stroke? The hell was that? As I was saying, Comic Con. Our story starts on the train. <laughs> After we snuck through security, we had a look around. As you do. Very cool sheet. Make transformers to you cowards. We then also found a section that had game consoles, which included a 3DS. We took this opportunity to flaunt our 3DS that we had brought with us. Steven? What up? Can we play on the DS? You got the DS at home. <laughs> Are you shooting me? It was around this time I started losing my voice, which is insane because I have shouted way louder for longer periods of time and have been fine, but I speak slightly louder over a crowd of people and lose my voice. Fuck off. This is when we went off and got our photo op with Brandon Rogers and Alex Brightman. For those insignificant fucks who don't know, Brandon is a sketch comedian on YouTube, also known as one of my favorite people to watch right now. They're selling dildos to kids. Don't look at the dildos. Alex Brightman is known for Broadway, where he's Beetlejuice in the Beetlejuice musical and Dewey Finn in the School of Rock musical, also known as my favorite Broadway actor. And such a bold departure from the original source material! And they are here for Helluva Boss, my favorite animated series. So the stars really fucking aligned here, didn't they? <laughs> After what you did to me? I didn't do anything! It was an accident! An accident?! This is also how our interaction went down. I like your hat, bro. That's a new shirt. Haven't seen that before. I've seen that all over this bullshit. We said thanks and went on our merry way whilst trying not to come ourselves. I then also went to meet Eddie Boley, who for those who don't know works with Tomska on his sketches. <laughs> I am Wizzo the Wizard! Bow before me and my magical mastery! <laughs> you up? After looking around some more, we headed over to watch the Hasbin Hotel panel with Brandon and Alex. This is Brandon's good side. I don't have a good side, so I sit in the center. I'll sit, uh, your good side's under your clothing. Oh, we have a monitor so we can see how good we look. Look at that. <laughs> Parker, Parker, you can remember that was a test. Get him. Yeah, the Parker test. Get him. Forewarned, if any of you uh, brought your kids, I don't know what the fuck you were thinking. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's a very deep question. I, I thought question. we could. That's a very deep question. I figured we could start with a softer okay. question. Like, how has the experience been seeing the fan response to both of these projects? Oh my God. Well, if I knew I'd be here, here are you telling me too deep, too not soft enough. I never thought that I would. I would be at a, at a convention where I can say whatever I want to London and. <laughs> So many people at the table, they're like, what? They start like that. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that, but, but it's true. That's what you sound like sometimes. Oh, this now's not the time to be offended. We have, we, we have terrible. 
of the long sense, too. Yeah, we're the land of the hard R's, but everything R and here we are. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, I can't understand if the, if the word ends in an R or an A here. I don't know. It's anyone's guess. I wrote Tyla, T-Y-L-A down, for a, uh, a lovely young man named Tyler, because I heard him say, I wrote your name, Tyla. I went, nice to meet you, Tyla. How do you all tell the difference? Yeah. No, the answer to your question is we love that you're here, and thank you for liking our show. It's a, an insane premise that I would get a free ticket to London because I do this voice. who I think either belongs in heaven or would want to be there because it's all just clouds and, and, uh, yeah. and I have a fear of heights. Um, I don't like rain. I don't like rain. I like yeah. where it comes from because we all know that it's just angels who have you know, drank too much. Yeah. And, um, also, Brandon and I, if you don't know this, for those of you, who's, who here is going to hell in the evening? <laughs> well, good, because Brandon and I will be driving the bus there. All right. This does feel like a high school rally where like somebody tells you not to do drugs, except do them. <laughs> now I did not say do drugs, I said I Brandon do drugs. says do drugs. And I said they're fun. So I did not say do them. I said I wouldn't be No, don't do, don't do that. Don't do that. But also do them. You know what I mean? Favorite kids in the audience? <laughs> no? Okay. Um, but I did. I just for every single character I asked in hotel. There is a there was a a, a, a reel of, uh, that I will eventually release. Of me auditioning for every single character. I just for Alistair, I just for House, I just for uh, everything. Um, and then they couldn't decide between Adam and Pentius, and so they didn't decide. <laughs> Which makes me very, very happy for all of, uh, uh, for me and my bank account. Thanks. Uh, I'm kidding. But I'm not kidding. Thank you. Hooray! You also, we don't have to cheer after everything. It's really interesting to hear what a lull sounds like. But, <laughs> Just to be completely quiet. I mean this. Don't be the one stupid idiot. Um, just exactly. Um, just see what happens. Just two, like five seconds of silence. Just want to hear it. Because when do you ever hear that, right? Ready? Nope. Okay. So we'll try. We'll try. And nobody will be. We won't be mad. Everyone else will be mad when this ends. Ready? So good. Glad, glad you're walking in the direction. Track yourself. You know who you are. All right, no, we're good. We love this. We're okay with all this. And uh, John fucking Waters, if any of you know, uh, yeah, there we go. Half of you are cultured. Yeah, John Waters is in this episode. He is my hero. He is my number one idol as a director, as a storyteller, as, a, as just a comedian. And he, he, he did an amazing job. I've seen every bit of recorded media of John Waters. I guarantee you, you have not heard what we made him do. This voice that he uses, the shit he says. It was, I was cream fan growing in my uh, little skirts. And so, um, yeah, I think they would. Okay, they, they improvise a lot, baby. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 <laughs> one person, huge improvising fan. Woo! <laughs> one person. We make a lot of shit up that makes it out of the show. I know the famously the one uh, that it's on now on a Hot Topic t-shirt. Um, when I said guitar solo, fuck yeah. Very exciting, improvised line. And for those of you who are more Hell of a Boss fans, I, I'm very happy that my improvised line about Ozzy's enormous penis. I did not make the improvised line. I just sort of said, talk about things that are big. <laughs> and so I just sort of went, and so what came out was, it looks, it's big, it's huge, it's like a kaiju, it's a. For the pilot, we did, yes. yeah, and it wasn't until we started um, physically assaulting each other we decided, no, this is too much talent for one room. Um, no, it was awesome, you know what happened? I think we were going to try and shoot the whole show together, but then COVID hit us like a bag of bricks, and we realized, oh, we're actually better at, we're more efficient doing the show if the actors come in separately. We're all working actors, we all have different schedules. It would be a pain in the butt and badge if we had to get everyone in the same room for every episode. These are, the thing with actors is everyone has a different, like, it's not like actors work nine to five, we work 12 hour days a lot, and then it's, it's, it would, yeah, it, it, so I wish we could play along with each other, um, 
but uh, fortunately, Richard, I mean, well, fortunately, Richard Horvitz is really good at imitating every other character. He's our voice director. He knows his Nazi, um, which some of you might know of, and he's, um, he, if you're wondering what I meant by this, back in 2023, Richard Horvitz was my voiceover teacher for a few months. Hello there. Hello. How are How you? How are you? I'm good. Good, thanks. good, good. Wonderful. So, you know, yeah, we do it separately. The pilot was a match at the time where we got to um, breathe each other's air. It is, I don't know if any of you have ran a show before. It is the, one of the hardest things to do. And with the animation, you have hundreds of people that work underneath you, and you have to run all that. She's doing it two times at the same time, plus the hell of the shorts. I don't know how she's not fucking crazy. She might be. She might be. I would actually love to move to some fan questions right now. Big fan of questions over there. Big fan of questions. And also big fan of shout outs, which is what we're going to start with right now for you. Um, from, an anon from anonymous, they just want to say, you both have inspired me to be myself a lot more and be confident in who I am. That's a lovely thing to say. Thank you, anonymous. Thank you, anonymous. I feel that I like how comfortable they are. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, I, I didn't think I might get into heaven, but, uh, oh yeah, I also have been, been thinking about that first question about a lot, where we go, where we die. I don't think anything happens. Yeah, you just, you just done, yeah. Where were you during, you know, anything else? You know, that's why you got to difference now. We are only alive in a small fraction, a little sliver between two eternities. We have this little window to ask more questions. And then another question comes from, how do you get into the role of your character for your shows? I fucking am. <laughs> I've never seen him do this outside the bedroom. <laughs> you have to understand, this is not that much of a departure for me. <laughs> I don't think I get it. I scream a little on my way to work. Uh, I mean, I drive I'm on the bus screaming. Uh, I do a fan warm up uh, to do anything that I've done, other than Adam, because that is kind of also my voice, in a, in a way. He's like my blitz. He's like my blitz, I just have to kind of put on a little douche, you know? <laughs> um, but for Fizz and Serpentis, it's, it's a bit of a warm-up that I've done for many, many years in shows, because my voice sits here, right here. It doesn't sit anywhere else, and so to manipulate it to go a lot higher is not good if it's not healthy. So it's a lot of, like, lip trailing regular vocal warm-ups and then into a vocal warm-up that has that sort of, uh, Chainsaw, you know, added to it, um, or the gravel, or whatever you want to call it, and then Sir Petch is just that exact voice. Fizz is basically a British, or sorry, Petch is basically a British Fizz with no gravel. Because Fizz is this, and then if I just, and then, and then, and then I go higher with Fizz, I end up up here, right, and then the little Fizz, and then I just take the gravel away and step it, and you feel it. So much, and I just unabashedly just enjoy it. I know people are like, don't make me do it. I'm like, please make me do the voice. It's very fun to do. It is, yes. That is Richard Horvitz's favorite voice when he's, he, he, he can explain it. <laughs> Richard Horvitz, every time we're at a Comic Con and someone asks, Richard, what's your favorite line of yours? He'll <laughs> always say, one of mine. Because then he'll do the sex. He's I want to have you. He's bone, Jenny. Video. That's I think the best ideas come from from 
you, you, you shift the lead, right? So like surround yourself with people who make you laugh because you're gonna try and channel other people that have feeling to people around the world that you felt, you know, that's like art. You know, you feel something, you try and make other people feel it. If you're not laughing, if you're not with people who make you laugh or watching things that make you laugh, it's like how do you how are you familiar with the tip? Right? Like, like if you're, if, I, I think if you're familiar with that feeling of like, oh, well, that's funny. I think you're better at writing it. I think also, it, I mean, that's why I don't write dramas. I don't put my fucking head there. Myth couldn't do that. <laughs> that emotional shit. I still like writing emotional stuff, but I think comedy. I, I, I don't know. I, I guess I'm just better at like finding, analyzing how that makes me feel laughter and then emulating that as opposed to like you know, other emotions. I, uh, yeah. Also, I think comedy is just easier. I, I, it's very second nature. Like, what about you? So unfair of Brandon, one of the funniest people in the world, said comedy's easier. What an asshole. You're an asshole. I try to be, but at least I'm tight and clean. <laughs> now I know we're going to know. So this question comes from Jasper and Philip, who ask, there are rumors that Beetlejuice the Musical will be coming to the West End next year. Okay, there's a rumor. There's a rumor. If that happens, excuse me, would you consider reprising your role? Um, if, if it happens, which there are like whispers, I don't know where the whispers are coming from necessarily. I've certainly never started them, although uh, I have not denied them. Uh, if it does come here, not only would I consider it, I would really want to do it. That, that's a different answer than I had like a few years ago because I had done it. And I kind of had been with it for like five years, developing it, figuring it out, and all that. And it was a blast. And I left on such a high. And um, it was just like the great, it changed my life fundamentally. Um, and so I've been away from it long enough now that I really kind of miss it in a way. And now that I've done these, truly, I mean, it means like doing these cons have actually re energized my want to not only do it, but to like re develop it, get back into rehearsal, find new shit. If we were to do it in the West End, a ton of new shit that would have, have you know, stuff here, referential stuff here, and, and so yes, I would be very, very happy if, and I would just need someone to house me, you know what I mean, so. But nobody seems to want to, so I guess we're not doing it. No, no, you'll, you'll, you know, you'll know when we do it, and if we do it, I would love to. And if, it, it was, it would, if I don't do it, it's not for lack of wanting to do it, but I would love to. I love theater people, I love the arts, and all that people in the arts, and God bless everybody in it, but it's cool to watch, like, a father and a son. Father's a banker, the son is unemployed and useless. And and both dressed as characters because they love it enough to want to go out, spend their money, make the stuff and be here. Could not be more flattering, and we do not take that lightly at all. Brandon and I, everyone else in our show doesn't take it. No, they don't. And that's why the two of us are here. We we really like you guys, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Blake Roman doesn't care. <laughs> I hate when I said that. Oh, And then Brandon, you mentioned that this is not that far of a departure from your speaking voice, but in the early stages, was there ever a conversation about like maybe doing something a little bit more different? That's interesting. I, uh, there really was never a discussion about the voice. There really wasn't. I, I, Viv and I wrote the pilot together at a dumping and I think I was starting to voice and have more money. And then he could say, da, 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 and, I would, and, it, it, and there was never any notes about what I was doing. And then we get to the report. I mean, this footage of us filming the pilot, that is literally footage of me voicing Liz for the first time ever. I, I've never rehearsed the voice. In fact, for, for me to stay in character, keep my voice consistent, I always go back to that footage of us filming the pilot. Not the pilot itself, but the footage of us filming the pilot. And that's the, the standard that I try to keep every episode as that up for. I was off the rails in the pilot. I was scared, so that played into my performance. I was my first time voice acting, and I'm surrounded by Erica Lindbeck, Brock Baker, Richard Horvitz, people that have been doing this professionally for so long, and that was my first day. And so I think I was kind of trying to overcompensate with how loud and bombastic my deliveries were, and then just kind of stuff. Because I talk like this, but Blitz comes up here and he talks like this. And, and so it is, it is just my voice, but a bit more taxing. Uh, it's just me. It's just me on a lot of caffeine. Uh, and uh, anyway, I forget the question, but I'm definitely going to help. <laughs> what would be a secret hobby that your character would enjoy? 
It's like a guilty pleasure. Is Pentius and Adam all play different turn-based card games? <laughs> Fizz, Fizz plays Magic the Gathering. Um, Pentius plays... Pentius plays Pokemon. <laughs> And, and Adam fucks with Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> well, what about Did you say wheelchairs get to skip the queue? That's not a rule, no, that's not a rule. Do they? I don't know. We, we don't run the play. I don't know. I'm going to roll right up to the front. I, I feel like if you roll over... I don't know. I, I've, I've seen people with less come up to the front. You know, I, I would assume... I think just roll over as many people as you possibly can and get there. I think it's his first guy. I think just, I want to create melee and cap. Just beat each other up and each other come out and hell. Winner takes all. You know what I mean? I think wheelchair is an advantage in this situation. Just be great. What was the question? So, are there any projects, personal or professional, that you can talk about that you would like to share? Uh, I'm dropping a video today on my channel. Uh, Yes, it's very dark sided. And the next week, hell of a book. We're not allowed to talk about that after this question. But yeah, what about you? What are you? What are you? Uh, I have a bunch of things going on, but the cool thing is, is I sold the cartoon to Warner Brothers that I'm going to be developing right now. I'm developing right this moment. Uh, and Viv has been very helpful. Brand, everyone's been very helpful because it is really not my realm, the writing of it. But I got really lucky and grateful and was able to pitch a really cool idea that I thought was cool that other people seem to. So I have a, a cartoon that I'm currently developing and pitching next month. So hopefully it will be, um, we have a studio and everything behind it, we have an animator, we have, we have a show runner, and all that kind of stuff. So it's just about what network wants to pick it up. And so it's uh, hopefully soon to be for Feast for Your Eyes. And it is a, yeah, it's a, it's a, show, uh, it's a show called Cleaners. Um, the, it's just one word, Cleaners, and it's about biohazard trauma cleaners in pre-Y2K pre, pre Boston. Um, it's, very, it's very funny, very vulgar. Um, I've taken a lot of, you know, sort of, tips and tricks from Viv, so it has created itself into this sort of more vulgar world. But yeah, it kind of lives in between like a Bob's Burgers, Family Guy situation, but it's my, 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 sort of my thoughts and voice on the pre-Y2K times of one of the most <laughs> crazy cities I've ever been in. Are there a lot of squirrels in Boston? I feel like I go there, I'm always seeing squirrels. Are you, are you asking for a very specific reason? No, I went to Boston. It's so weird that these are, wait, can I just say what you, what you, it's so weird, two of the characters in our show are two completely drug out of Boston squirrels. I think it is, yeah. It's, 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 it's been, yeah, there's a lot of squirrels in Boston. I went there and I noticed they would come up to you, and, I, and, then, and then I went to an arcade nearby, and they were like, oh, here's some nuts for the squirrel. Like, they were selling nuts, she could feed. And I'm like, are you guys just, this is normal? So after the panel we continued to peruse the rest of the con. I bought myself a Star Wars mystery bag. So here's the opening of that. Mystery bag for Star Wars. Oh, no. <laughs> I got a the Yoda. N nice. Oh god! No what? Playing cards. Oh, playing cards. I bet they're more durable than Stormtrooper armor. They're more durable than my fucking voice apparently. Yeah. Oh it's that cunt from the Mandalorian. What is it? What, Min Minge Weaver? No, not, no, not Minge Weaver. <laughs> no, Luke. I am your father. <laughs> Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Are you, sa are, you sa are you satisfied with your purchase? I am. I just don't want to go kill myself. Nice. My voice was getting so much worse, so we just decided to sit down and have a pizza. When our day came to the end, we were heading for the exit and I saw a Star Wars Outlaws section. Star Wars Outlaws love. We love to see it. W O O O O L. Say woo you fucking melon. You said it successfully earlier. Oh, I can't end this video without mentioning the branding, of course. So we got on the train, where I put my head down and watched Fox Machina, and we made it home around 9 p.m. Fucking Machina. It's Machina cunt.
This is abuse. Ignore that. Baby, baby. I mean this in the nicest way possible. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, it's not a good idea. Oh, it's not a good idea. Goodbye.